The History of the Lancaster Bomber The Lancaster Bomber was designed by a man called Roy Chadwick. The Lancaster was meant to be an adaption, an ultimate successor of the Manchester, which was retired in 1942 due to many troubles in flight. The company forged with the making of this aircraft was the Avro, who made the Handley Page Halifax, another four-engined aircraft. The plane was nicknamed affectionately as the Lank. The Lancaster was built with four Rolls-Royce engines and was far superior to any four-engine aircraft which had been manufactured for the RAF use. It was built to hold the heaviest bombs for release during war and was made just in time for the middle part of World War II. It was made as a night bomber and needed to be flown low to excel and be used to its maximum potential. However, this plane was used as a daylight precision bomber too. It really was an all-round wartime aircraft. And eventually, once it was discovered, it sent fear into the enemy who were to face it. The Lancaster could carry the Tall Boy, known as a medium capacity bomb at 12,000 pounds in weight. Then later on, the plane was adapted so it could carry the Grand Slam earthquake bomb, which weighed a whopping 22,000 pounds. In total during production, over 7,500 of these type of planes were built and manufactured by a selection of companies. But no more so than A.V. Rowe, who built half of these alone. The original contract was given to Avro for just over 1,000 to be produced at their factory in Chatterton in Oldham. These were built during the war years and test flights had to be taken place and these were flown in the Woodford Aerodrome in Cheshire. The first test flight was in early January 1941 and the aircraft surpassed any of the expectations of this type of plane. Although this plane was designed by a British person and built in Britain, the production was then outsourced to Canada in 1942 and so the Victory Aircraft Company in Ontario began production. The Lancaster R5727 was sent to Canada for them to use as a real prototype. This was another record that was broken as it became the first to conduct a transatlantic crossing. Not all went swimmingly as the first batch of planes sent to England during a time when these were needed most for the current conflict that was being fought in Europe were not able to be used due to many faults which were put down to the use of unskilled labour in Canada. When it was flown in conflict, the Lancaster had to have a seven-man team to fly and use all the aircraft to its full capacity. And during the World War, the average age of the crew was only 22 years old. The men would each be in charge of two positions, Known as a bomb aimer, he laid in the nose of the plane for the whole flight. Each man would be wearing a parachute at all times in case of the need to bail out of the plane. The escape hatch was the smallest of any war aircraft and only 15% of the men got out of the hatch when needed to do so, a percentage which was the lowest of all aircrafts used in the war. At the top of the plane, Two men would be placed there, the pilot and the flight engineer. They sat next to each other, and although this was a plane with a lot of room, the room was never used for the crew. Only the bombs and guns and ammunition needed to complete the mission given to them. Behind a curtain was a small dimly lit area for the navigator to be able to navigate the plane, which as mentioned, was usually flown at night. The Lancaster was built with four hydraulically operated gun turrets. All were equipped with machine guns. The capacity of gunfire this plane could expel was tremendous and eventually became one of the most dangerous aircrafts used in the Second World War. 
and was named as a reason for why the war ended when it did. Something which was not corroborated, but some say the war ended earlier than expected due to the operations this plane was able to fulfil and the devastation it could cause. A unique feature of the Lancaster was a 10 metre long bomb bay which each aircraft had. This was covered by doors which were operated by one of the seven man crew. In 1943, 617 Squadron, who were a squadron based in RAF Scampton in Lincolnshire, were given a special operation. They were to carry out raids at the dams in the Ruhr Valley, which was situated east of Dortmund. This operation was known as Operation Chastise and was later renamed as the Dam Busters after the successful outcome. The aim for the squadron was to destroy the Ruhr Valley in the heart of Germany. The valley was used by the Germans for steel and coal production, as well as factories and power plants and even mines. This attack was led by a man by the name of Commander Guy Gibson. He was told that he would need to practice low-level flying and a backspin, and after the Lancaster had been modified to carry even heavier bombs, one known as a bouncing bomb, then they would be ready for the attack. On the night of May the 16th, 1943, after the squadron had completed their successful run, the operation was successful. All of this had been destroyed. The dams were bombed and the water flooded the area and the dams had extensive damage, which in turn halted some of the German production of war paraphernalia. But this was wholly not successful as the RAF sustained substantial losses to the crew, over half in fact, and out of 19 bombers sent to Germany, only eight made it back. After a daytime raid in Augsburg in April 1942, the Lancaster bomber was discovered by the enemy, which made them attempt to make something superior, and because of high losses in any operation involving the Lancaster, daylight raids were used sparingly, and this plane was safe for nighttime destruction alone. 617 Squadron were to be the most famous Lancaster squadron ever. They headed up the attack on the Tirpitz, which was anchored in Norway. After three attacks, the ship sank. This ship was to be used for refueling the German aircrafts and other war machinery. Another devastating blow for the Germans and those supporting them in the Second World War. The Lancaster conducted 156,000 outputs and dropped a mammoth amount of bombs between 1942 and 1945. 3,249 planes were lost in action and was known as the best nighttime bomber of the war. After the war had ended, the plane didn't just rest. It was used to transfer prisoners of war back to the British Isles. Then finally in 1953, the final Lancaster bomber was retired in the UK, although it was still in use by the Royal Canadian Air Force, just no further production of the craft was seen. Although it was tried, the Lancaster was never superseded by any aircraft of a similar style. Out of the 7,000 made, only 17 aircraft still remain. Many are on show to the public in different countries. Four of these are in England. One still resides in the RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire, a place where this aircraft could call home, due to the 617 Squadron, who were from the same area. This squadron also assisted in the D-Day assault at the end of World War II, and were considered the most successful Lancaster crew ever. <laughs>